Welcome back. We were discussing in power electronics about the power diodes. We have covered the different loads connected with the diode. This is the last lecture for the second lecture series. The topic that we are going to cover is the recovery of the energy trap in the circuit with the help of a diode. When the circuit is lossless, that is the resistance is zero, then the energy which is stored in the inductor remains tapped. We know that the energy present in the inductor is given by half Li square. So here the energy which is present in this inductor will not dissipate if the resistance is zero. So some amount of resistance is required so that the energy may dissipate through the register. In practical circuits, enhancing the efficiency involves returning stored energy back to the power source. So it means that if you have the energy which is present in the inductor, this energy has to be returned back to the power source. So there will be some source which is delivering the power. So in practical circuit, the efficiency will be enhanced only when this energy is returned back to the source. This is achieved by adding a second winding to the inductor and connecting a diode. So we required one more winding as well as a diode connected in the network. Combination of the inductor and the secondary winding functions as a transformer. So similar to transformer action we will achieve here when the inductor and a secondary winding is present. The secondary winding is arranged such that the V1 is positive and V2 is negative with respect to V1 and vice versa. Here the V1 and V2 are the voltage of the primary and the secondary winding of the transformer. The secondary winding responsible for returning the stored energy to the source via the diode D1 is termed as the feedback winding. So this diagram or the circuit diagram shows the transformer with the voltage V1 and voltage V2 in the secondary winding. Note the polarity of V1 and V2. So the polarity of V2 is negative with respect to V1 and vice versa for the V1. There will be a diode which is connected in the network in the secondary winding so that the current I2 takes all the energy from the secondary winding and delivered it back to the source so that the efficiency will be enhanced. So the number of turns in the primary winding is N1 and number of turns in the secondary winding is N2 and the supply voltage is given to the primary winding and a switch is connected in the network so that we can disconnect the circuit whenever necessary. Now if we assume a transformer with a magnetizing inductance LM, so here the inductance LM is connected in parallel. This represents the magnetization inductance because you will be having a core and in the core the flux will be established. This flux will be established in the core which is a representation of the inductor LM in the network. If the transformer is ideal transformer and if we refer the diode and the secondary voltage source to the primary side of the transformer, so this diode D1 and the voltage source of the secondary is referred to the primary side of the transformer by dividing it with the turns ratio. So the turns ratio is given by N2 by N1. So if we divide the secondary voltage by the turns ratio and the diode voltage by the turns ratio, it can be referred from the secondary side to the primary side. So it will have a circuit without this physical transformer. There will be two mode of operation, mode 1 and mode 2. In the mode 1, the switch is closed at time t equal to 0 and the D1 diode is reversed bias. So there will be no current flowing in the secondary winding, I2 will be 0. The voltage Vs of the source can be represented by VD minus Vs where the VD is basically the diode voltage minus the source voltage divided by the turns ratio 
So we can find what is the diode voltage from this equation. We, we can also write the source voltage equation as LM di by dt applying the KVL equation in this loop. So the voltage here will be same as the source voltage and we know that voltage of the inductor is given by L di by dt. So we are getting LM di1 by dt. Then the current I1 which is flowing is same as the source current Is in the primary winding which is equal to Vs by Lm into T for a time 0 to T1. So T1 is the time when the switch is open again. At the end of this mode the primary current is equal to Vs by Lm into time T1. So T1 is the total conduction time of the circuit. In the mode 2 the switch opens and the voltage across the inductor is reversed. So the inductor which is present here due to the open of the switch, the voltage will be reversed and D1 will be forward biased. So this D1 will be forward biased. And we can write the KVL equation in this loop which will give LM DI1 by DT which is the voltage of the inductor LM plus Vs by A which is the voltage here and with I1 T equal to 0 that the total conduction time I1 uh, for the mode 1 will have some current I0 that will become the initial current for the mode 2. So here some current I0 will be added to the total solution of the current I1. So the time here will be from 0 to T2. So the conduction time T2 is given by a Lm I0 by Vs which is equal to A times A is the trans ratio multiplied with the total time of the mode 1 time T1 and the current I1 at time T2 is 0 means all the energy is dissipated. At the end of this mode all the energy stored in the inductor is returned to the source so no current will be present at time T2. Let us understand the waveform from this equivalent circuit so this is the mode 1 circuit and here you have the mode 2 circuit. If we draw the current I1 in the primary winding with respect to the time T, then the current will increase up to a time T1. So here the maximum current is Vs by Lm into T1. After that, for the time T2, which is the mode 2 circuit, there will be no current in I1. So I1 will be 0 here. Now, if we see the current a I2 which is referred to the primary circuit you will be having a current which is decreasing Vs by Lm into T1 is the total current which is present as initially here so here in this network at T2 there will be no current present if we draw the total current Is waveform then first it is increasing for T1 period and then it is decreasing and becoming zero for T2 period the voltage V1 and V2 similarly we can draw the waveform for the primary and the secondary winding. So here the voltage it will be constant Vs for time T1 and then it will be minus Vs by A. Whereas in V2 you will be having A into Vs and then you will have minus Vs. Similarly the diode voltage we can uh, plot for a time T1 which is equal to Vs 1 plus A times for a time T1 and then you will be having zero voltage in the time T2. Let us solve one problem to understand these trapped energy circuit. The source voltage is given to be 220 volt. The inductor value is 250 micro Henry. Number of turns in the primary winding is 10. Number of turns in the secondary winding is 100 and there is no initial circuit current. If the switch is closed for a total time period T1 which is 50 microsecond and then open. So this comes under the mode 1 and then you will have the mode 2. Determine the following. So let us uh, determine the first the reverse voltage of the diode. You have to determine the turns ratio first which is equal to N2 by N1. So number of turns in the secondary winding is 100. Number of turns in the primary winding is 10. So that gives to be 10 as the turns ratio. The diode voltage Vd equal to Vs1 plus A. This is the formula. So the source voltage is 220 volt which we can put it here and the turns ratio is 10 so that gives 2420 volt. The peak value of the primary current if we have to find I0 that is equal to Vs by Lm into T1. So T1 is the conduction time period which is equal to 50 microsecond. Vs is the voltage 220 volt given and the inductor Lm value is also given to be 250 micro Henry. So that gives to be 44 ampere as the peak value of the primary current. 
the peak value of the secondary current is nothing but the primary current divided by the turns ratio so whatever the primary current we are getting you divide with the turns ratio you'll get the secondary peak value of the current and the conduction time of the diode if you want to find t2 then you can use a n m i naught by v s putting the value of turns ratio the inductor value the current i naught and the v s you'll get 500 microsecond as the conduction time of the diode what is the source energy then the source energy is nothing but half n i square so here you will be using the inductor value and current i naught that is the maximum current present in the system that gives to v to 42 millijoule as the total source energy this completes the second lecture of the power electronics we will start with the third chapter from the next lecture onwards thank you for now see you in the next lecture